Hey guys, welcome back to the Book Haven with Rachel and Raven. We're so glad you're here. Grab something yummy to drink and let's get this episode started. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to dive into tips for audiobooks, for listening to audiobooks. And one of the first tips that I have is, I, well, it's not really, I don't know. It's just a, a fact. I just want to go ahead and clear the air. I think we've done this before about audiobooks being just as good as reading an actual book. Um, and there's science behind that. You are welcome to Google it. <laughs> I have not Googled it today, but there are pictures of like brains um, on audiobooks and brains reading regular books and like, you know, physical books. And the activity is equivalent. So, um, just but the air. <laughs> I just wanted to clear that up because I think, you know, sometimes my husband sometimes will be like, well, that's not really reading. But um, I, I'm, I'm winning him over little by little. Um, but anyway, so one thing that I like to do, so sometimes I use audiobooks for books that sometimes have like harder names in them, um, or I'm trying to think of like if there is, if it's a book that is like a, I don't know, takes place overseas in a different country, and I know that there's going to be just different names that I'm not familiar with pronouncing. Um, I like to use audiobooks for that. Um, but I will also have the physical book in front of me and follow along. Um, usually I do this for just harder, um, harder type of reads, re uh, books that really challenge me. And I will tell you that when I first started reading Jane Eyre every year, I used audiobooks or the audiobook while following along. Um, in the actual book. Um, when you're diving into old classical books, and that's not something that you're generally used to picking up and reading, those move a little bit slower. And audiobooks really help with you being able to continue making progress. Um, hopefully that makes just, sense. Yeah, I was just reading too that reading um, the book alongside listening to the audio can help you practice the skill of listening to an audiobook. So yeah. if you're new to listening to audiobooks, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a hard or challenging book. It could be even a book that you're familiar with and yeah. you're just following along, but it's keeping you in the book because I think the most common um, thing that I hear when people are like, oh, I can't do audiobooks is just the fact that they like can't stay engaged in the story. They're going to start thinking about other things or whatever when the book's not yeah. right in front of them. So um this could be a good tool to help train yourself how to listen to an audiobook and stay focused is also looking at it while you're listening to it. Yeah, I would say that's true. And like even with my children and just we've done audiobooks since they were really little, training them to and when I say training, I mean literally I turn the audiobook on and they're sitting there um listening. Um and I didn't necessarily like quiz them at the end of the audiobook, but I did try to see kind of what they retained from it. And um, so just training them and just listening um, and what, you know, and just kind of seeing what they were absorbing from the story. Um, and it was always very interesting um, what all they did get from just listening. But it, that took training. That took time of just practicing that. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes into, too, like doing something mindless when you're listening. So for kids, it could be coloring or playing with Legos or um, building blocks, something quiet so that they are listening, but they can still be moving and using their hands, and that really helps kids. But it also helps with adults, too. I think I already talked about how when yeah. I first started listening to audiobooks, I would just play like solitaire on my phone because it doesn't require that much thought. And yeah. um, so I was able to listen or, um, you know, when you're doing chores around the house and sometimes, yes, you can get sidetracked with like starting to think about something else, but that's what the like um, 15 second back reverse button is for, you know, cause you can go back until you go, Oh, I remember them talking about that and then go from there. But yeah, really doing something if you if you have if you're having a hard time just sitting and listening you really 
I don't know anybody that just sits and listens, unless you're in the car. Like most people who are listening to audiobooks are also doing other things while they're listening. Yeah. A lot of times I try, I mean, honestly, sometimes I'm just mindlessly scrolling on my phone. If we want to just be real honest. <laughs> um, and I am listening to um, my books sometimes. Usually that's at night when I just don't have any energy to do anything else. Um, but I also like to crochet while I do an audiobook. A lot of times I do laundry. Um, but yeah, those mindless chores you know, or even walking, if you just go for a walk um, and listen to an audiobook, that's, that works too. Okay, so this, uh, we're going to kind of move into another tip, a really cool tip that um, I actually had the privilege of sharing with Rachel um, that just revolutionized, I feel like I'm right, <laughs> I, it revolutionized yeah. your audiobook reading life. Um, but adjusting the speed, you don't have to listen to it at the, at the, at the speed that they give you, you can change that baby. You can like bump that up, crank it up, <laughs> crank it up. Now I will say that it's easier to do that and listening at a faster speed. If you have like earbuds in, I find it really hard to like, if we're in the car or something like that, um, yeah. to focus at a faster speed, if I'm just listening to it while hearing all of the surrounding noise. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas I if I agree. had my ear, earbuds in, sometimes I can crank that up to like, I don't know, 2.25 or something crazy. How fast, what's your fastest speed? That's a good question. I think my average is like two. I have gone higher than that. Um, and I've gone lower too. Like if we're talking about like a British accent or, um, a lot of like, uh, I'm thinking of just all the like we cannot see. There was so many like French oh, yeah. names of places and people and whatever. So I will go down to like 1.75, even 1.5 for like some classical books. Mm -hmm. But um, oh my word, to listen on one is just torture. <laughs> Complete torture. And, and see, I think that this is, so yes, Raven is the one that got me like going with audiobooks because I was that person that was like, I can't listen to a book like that. I get sidetracked, whatever. And so she taught me how to listen to a book. So it's very, very fitting that we're talking about this. But <laughs> um, that was one of the, the tricks was that you can speed it up and that it really did change it because um, I think you stay more engaged when the story is moving faster. Or I know for me, I think that's what helps. So um, I just got done listening to a nonfiction book. And I don't know that I would have finished that if I had to physically read it. But because I was doing the audio and could speed it up and get through it faster, I was able to stay engaged the mm -hmm. whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, even when I listen to audio books with my kids, I have this little trick that I do. So um, we will start the audio book and I kind of gauge the room because I usually can tell when my kids are like this is so slow um, and I bump it up you know like one notch and then I let it play I just gradually bump it up to a speed that I feel like everybody's happy with everybody's I mean there isn't a really a science to it but like I just kind of slowly work them up to just a little bit of a higher speed not as fast as what I would read if I was doing it on my own, but um, usually to about, I can get them up to about 1.6 yeah. and, and they, yeah, because they don't like it when it drags either. And yeah, so there's that. But I will tell you really funny is when I turn my audio book on for getting that my earbuds are not connected and everybody is <laughs> quite astonished oh. with how fast things are going <laughs> yes my family loves to make fun of me and they'll be they'll like walk in and be like because that's yeah, what it exactly. sounds like to them. <laughs> they're like how do you understand that I'm like I don't yeah. know what I do <laughs> well and it's just if I would have turned it on at that speed you know not if I would have walked into a room I don't know that I would have picked it up either but you know you're 
at right. a certain point, you're like conditioned to the way this person is speaking and how fast it's going and whatever. So you're okay with it. But yeah, my, my family constantly makes fun of me. Yeah. And, or like, how can you understand what they're saying when, when it's going so fast, like absorbing the story? I don't know. You just do. You just do. And I think also it, for me, it depends on what I'm doing. So yeah. sometimes like if I'm out walking and listening at a really high speed, I have to slow it down a little bit. I don't know. I guess yeah. maybe just because like there's more going on around me, but, um, but yeah, so I that think is speed. I think this will flow into the the next bit too is um about like picking genres and stuff. I think that there are genres that I can do faster. Um, oh yeah, with with no problem, just because this the story is not so you know intense. Um, like I so I listened to A Tale of Two Cities last year, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that I listened to that on maybe like one point two five. Maybe 1.5. Not only yeah. was there a British accent, <laughs> but it was a lot of information and very hard to follow. So that is not going to be super fast for me. Now, if we're talking young adult fantasy or whatever, I can crank that baby up and it's not that hard to follow along, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, think definitely if it's a genre that you're really familiar with and like you, I don't know, I always say like you can build the world really fast that you know yeah. in your in your brain um at least that's how it works for me if i can if i am familiar with i don't know there's certain genres that my brain whenever i start reading them my brain goes back to a it's a familiar place cuz i've read that genre before um and so it's really quick it, i can really quickly build that world in my brain so if you're used to reading fantasy um or listening to audiobooks with fantasy it's really easy for you to like, yeah, you know, connect Speed with this. that world. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and that's, that's the tip is that I would not suggest trying an audio book with a genre that you don't typically read. Um, yeah. Like don't go, oh, well now I'm going to listen to classical books and I've never done that before. And now I'm going to try it with audio books. And well, now I hate audio books. Like you have to try it with a genre that you're interested in so that you will be interested in the book. And yeah. then making that fit or pick a book that you're super excited to read about, you know, or read and, and, and do that. Like, don't pick something that you're, you've been dreading to get to and you're going to do the audiobook just so that you can get through it. Like, that's not going to be successful when you're first starting yeah. out, you know? Yeah. It's a skill like anything else. Like you have to build that skill. Um, so for sure, those, uh, for all those people saying that audiobooks is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's still another skill that you have to build. Like you have to, you know, you have to use a lot of different things when you're listening to audiobooks. Um, you have to be attentive. And so, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's a good skill. I mean, it's the reason why you're so encouraged to read to your children, you know, like yeah. it's, it's a good thing for your brain to be listening and focusing on something. It's still... Like there, yeah, yeah, there's equal, there's equal measures in that. I used I, to, I used to feel really guilty because I use audiobooks versus I enjoy doing audiobooks with my kids way more than I enjoy reading to them. And I used to feel really guilty about that. Um, and don't get me wrong. I read books to them when they were little, but um, we've, we've pretty much shifted that when we read together, we're doing audiobooks. And the reason is, is because I enjoy being read to, yeah. and I think there's benefit to, you know, I don't want to dread picking up a book and then like reading it and being really tired. And then I don't know, like, I like them to be able to see me enjoying the book as well. Yeah. I think there's merit in that too. I know my kids are, it, the, the audio book has to be really good for them to want to do it. I don't know why they've always insisted upon me reading it. You set um, the bar high, really okay, high. But early. I really don't. I really don't. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And it's almost a joke because I'm always going to not pronounce whatever it is right. Um, I've already talked about how I'm dyslexic, but I also didn't learn how to read phonetically. <laughs> There's yeah. just all sorts of issues with me. Um, so I have a really hard time sounding out um, names and places and spelling and all that 
fun stuff. So I think that's why my kids like it is because they want to hear what ridiculousness is going to come out of my mouth. Um, and I can't even remember what book it was that we did book club and I had been totally saying somebody's name. It was a whole series. It was yeah, a whole series. It was more, I can't remember, but I was like, that's how you said it. And my kids were like, yeah, that's how you say it. And it was not right. <laughs> um, I think it was Nevermore. I can't remember I'm what the sure name was. We've done that on another book too. Oh, but anyways, yes, yeah. I do it all the time. It's pretty funny. But see, even in that, if don't be nervous to – this is uh, not audiobooks, but don't be nervous to read to your kids if you're That's not true, a strong yeah. reader. Like, this is just a, another side rabbit trail, but um, they're going to remember you reading. They're not mm -hmm. going to remember you. Well, they will, <laughs> but it'll be a funny memory. It'll be a funny memory. You'll not be yeah. able to. Okay, so don't let the you know, intimidation scare you. Um, and the funny story that I have with that is that my husband read through the series, How to Train Your Dragon with my son when he was younger and they would go in and, and he would read it to him before he would go to sleep. And, um, there were a couple times when I would go sit in there and his, his reading was just so monotone that it would put me to sleep. And so we had this joke about how that's why, you know, my son liked it is because it would just put him to sleep. But <laughs> Even saying that, I don't even know if my son remembers that part of the story, but he remembers him reading to him and them reading yeah. through that series and how much fun it was. So the details get lost over the years. It's the memories of you spending the time reading and I would imagine listening to the audiobooks as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree with all of that. Yeah. Sorry, I got off on a on a rabbit trail, but... I think the um I think with kids especially but for everyone when you're getting started with audiobooks is to also find a really good narrator. Mhm. Mm that That's could be important. Yes, that can be make or break people. <laughs> yes. There have been some that um especially young adults. Did we already talk about this? I can't remember but um where the the young adult audiobooks almost sometimes seem to have more of a whiny sounding. Oh yeah. Yeah. Narrator. We did talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And that drives me insane. Um, yeah. I don't know the point of that, but that is a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. I don't like when narrators and I cannot remember what book it was. Maybe when I start talking, you'll remember which one it was that I told you, but um, it was a, it was a very sober story. Oh, it was um, Between Shades of Grey by oh, Rudis yeah. the Petties. And the narrator um, just sounded way too chipper. I mean, that was very <laughs> sober. It's a sad story, yeah. Yes, and like that bugged me. Um, I hung with it, but it just, the narrator's voice, her tone, and like how she spoke, I mean, she needs to be reading like happier stories because um, yeah. it just didn't match the mood of the book. Um, yeah. So I cannot, I cannot handle that. And I also cannot handle um, really like just monotone, you know, just flat line yeah. narrators yeah. either. Yeah. So, so pro pro tip for this is um, whatever you're using to listen to audiobooks, there's always a button that you can hit that says like sample mm -hmm. and you can listen. They'll give you a little clip of the narrator reading and listen to that and, and decide. And I know I've done that, um, with a, th with a lot of classical books, there's like a plethora of different people that have read the audiobook. And so you can most of the time have your pick of like what you want the person to sound like. Yeah. But most books are only going to have one one audio version. So you can go through and pick, um, like, maybe this is a book that I need to physically read versus listening to it because I'm not going to be able to stand that person. Mm -hmm. And on Audible, I know, um, so you would buy it on through Audible. There's, um, like, if you end up listening and you really don't like it, um, you can return it. I oh, think I've done that a lot. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. don't feel like even if you 
purchased it that you've got to finish it now because blah, blah, blah. Most of the time you can return it and it's no big deal. Yeah. They're very good about that. Um, and like giving you your credits back, um, if you bought credits or giving you your money back. Yeah. Um, don't suffer through if you do not have yeah. to do not suffer through a bad yeah. narrator because they're out there yeah i think also i would say on the narrators i would say that um finding like if authors who read their own books that makes oh, a that's huge difference so much fun. yeah when you listen to someone who actually wrote the story um because i they're- feel like that's very common with like memoirs and stuff like that but you can find fiction where the where the author yeah. is reading yeah yeah I um am waiting on a book by Fanny Flagg right now um, and she actually reads it she reads the story and so I'm excited about that because I haven't actually all the books that I've read from her um someone else is narrating but I, I found reckon, this I don't recognize that name what does she write um, she wrote Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh, oh okay. Now, uh, I, yes. Yeah, which is not one of my more, like, that's not one of my favorites from her. Um, but I read one called Can't Wait to Get to Heaven. And that one was cute. The, her books are just cute, in my opinion. They're just yeah. quaint little towns with quaint little people. But anyways, she reads... Um, the one that I'm hoping to get soon. And that's probably why there's such a long line for it is because the author reads the book. Um, The other thing I would say is look at the reviews because a lot of times that's a good indicator if it's a, I mean, listen to the sample, um, but, but also read the reviews and just kind of, I do that. Um, And then once you find a narrator that you like, you can click on their name and see yeah. everything that they narrate and chances are you will probably really like the other stuff that they read too like there'll be books that you're interested in yeah I think for the most part they they tend to stay in the same genres yeah yeah so and and that kind of segues really well into you can always get a dramatization or a cast of narrators um, that can make a story that's like ho-hum like a thousand times better. Yeah. A thousand times. And it's not just for little kid books. They also have a cast of characters for, I just made that phrase up. (laughs) (laughs) But um, where you have a story and there's different characters and each person is being read by somebody different. It's not because that's probably one of my pet peeves too, is when you have like a girl a woman reading and she's having to try to do a male's voice and yeah. it comes across so bad. You're just like, Oh, can you just read it? You don't need to pretend to <laughs> yeah. have this other voice. Very true. Um, yeah. I think for books, when you have a cast of narrative, like you have different people reading the different parts, that's really helpful. Um, but also in the dramatization, I will give a recommend um, for one of our favorite dramatizations is um it's from focus on the family um but it's the radio theater uh, chronicles of narnia and it's the whole entire book series um in like radio theater form and my kids grew up listening to those over and over and over again um and they really really liked those a lot those I don't are really think we fun. ever listen to those. So there's music and I mean there's sound effects and it's very, very close. I feel like focus on the family radio I think it's called radio theater. Anyways, they do a really great job of sticking very closely to the story, the stories that they do. Yeah. Um, and they have several. So if you're just trying that was kind of what we kicked off my kids enjoying audiobooks um is we kind of started i think with that i think that's kind of what we started with um yeah they would listen to it at night going to bed and all kinds of stuff yeah that will definitely help you practice being engaged too when there's a lot of Mm -hmm. stuff going on the my only like beef with that is sometimes they do cut out parts of the story so you do have to be careful if you're wanting to read the actual 
whatever full length text. But yeah. um, for the most part, if you're just trying to get the gist of the story, the dramatizations are very helpful. Yeah. And I think too, if you are shifting from like, I don't know how to say this, but if you are trying to get away from, if you have a few small children, elementary age children, and they've done a lot of screen time and you're really kind of maybe trying to pull away from that a little bit yeah. and to pour in more and like on the reading side, this is a great way to kind of get them introduced to that. Um, and make them interested in it versus just, you know, sitting them down and listening to, a, you know, a single person reading a story. I mean, that can be really hard for children who, you know, I don't know. There was a period in my life where I had to shift from like turning on the cartoons in the morning to <laughs> turning on like, you know, something, you know, an audiobook because I was kind of wanting to get away from that um, yeah. habit. Hopefully that yeah. made sense, but like, yeah. no, that's, this a is, that's a good way. That's a good way to kind of, well, adjust. and also, yeah, people put on the movie in the car and you could yeah. not do that and listen to a book too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think the next helpful thing is to maybe not pick a super long book. <laughs> Very <laughs> pick, true. Pick something that is only a few hours and, um, or if you can help it. And that way you're not setting yourself up for a 25 hour book <laughs> that, you know. Don't pull out Count of Monte Cristo, okay? <laughs> it's going, yeah. <laughs> okay, I children. Mean, <laughs> there are some sci fi books that, ha that I have tackled that are 20 something hours long. <laughs> and it's, it is a commitment, I will tell you. And it is hard for a seasoned person yes. to listen to it. Um, just because I'm like, oh my word, this is taking forever. Even if this, if the story is super interesting, I think it's my attention span. I just kind of, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to move on to something else. But the, don't start with that. There are yeah. a lot of good books that are 10 hours or under. And that sounds like a lot, but it's once you crank up that speed a little bit, it's not going to take that long. Yeah. So, um, but definitely I think that's a, a good way to start and to kind of train yourself is it, and a shorter book is auto, automatically going to move faster too. So yeah. you'll be more engaged in it. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, a, a good short, if you're looking for one for kids, one that just popped up into my brain is um, like Paddington is a very cute one. And I think whoever narrates it does a lot of the voices um, very well. That's a fun one. And those are really short. Um, yeah. And a lot of times you can get the, if you're not getting it for free from the library, a lot of times on Audible and stuff, they'll have um, like the collection. Mm -hmm. And so you'll get several stories with that one collection. So yeah. when you're reading those shorter books, you're not going to have to spend a whole credit on, you know, a 30 minute book. Yeah. 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 They will have like all of the Robert McCluskey books, like Make Way for Ducklings and, you know, all like a lot of times they bundle all of those together. Um, and yeah. those are, those are a lot of fun. Yeah. I have a lot of those in my Audible account in case anybody's <laughs> wondering. Because I went crazy one year. They had a huge sale and I bought everything and my kids were still small. It was nice. like a $2 sale or something crazy. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they do fun sales like that that much they anymore. Don't. Yeah. Every year I check and I don't, I mean, every year since that year. And I, I don't know if it was just like a one-time thing. They were yeah. just trying to get a whole bunch of customers because I think it was yeah. still fairly new. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Yeah. So okay. that leads us into like yeah. where to find Well, audiobooks. there's one more tip. Oh, okay. That I have one. <laughs> and then we'll talk about it. I think it's an important one. Um, is you need to set the timer on your audiobook. Yeah. And and I will tell you this because I do this all the time. Um, there is a feature in in every single app that I use to listen to audiobooks, there's always a timer. You just have to figure out where it is. I always set it for end of chapter. And here's why. <laughs> because if I get busy doing something and I've like walked away from my phone. 
or um, I fall asleep or something like that, I know it's going to stop at the end of the chapter. So all I have to do is go back to the other, the chapter, previous chapter, and right. then try to figure out where I was instead of letting it play to the end of the book. Cause it's just going to keep playing if you don't tell it not to. Um, yeah. And then you're going to be so super frustrated. So I feel like that's an important tip when you're first starting out is to kind of get your bearings and just set a timer for the end of the chapter. And then you can always click next, 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 next until you're done listening. But I don't know. That's really helpful for me. Yeah, it's helpful for me, especially when I'm listening at night because usually I'm in bed yeah. and the chances of me falling asleep are really high. Um, so I will yeah. set the timer. It was so funny the other night. I just have to tell this quickly. The other night I must have like been half asleep and I woke up and my apps were like moved around on my phone because oh. I think I fell asleep holding my phone. This is so not good. Yes, I know that I shouldn't be holding my phone in bed, but um, and and I had moved apps because sometimes you're just like really, really tired, you know, and I was just doing good to get in my bed, I guess. But that's hilarious. But I thought I could still listen to my audiobook. <laughs> when in so, fact, you just needed I, to go I, to sleep. I just needed to go to bed. But <laughs> I was holding out hope. Okay, so now we can talk about where you can find audiobooks. Okay, so. What, what do you think you use the most? Start with that. I definitely use Libby the most. Yeah, me too. Um, I start with Libby. Okay, explain, I, explain what Libby is. Okay, Libby is a, an audiobook app that is connected to your local library and um so i mean i guess there's other things you can get on there like you can get physical books magazines right like can't you borrow other stuff yeah you can borrow ebooks yeah, magazines. Okay. yeah okay i strictly use it for audiobooks um I, but i get ebooks for uh, my daughter and then it just you can have it go straight to the kindle so that's interesting. Just, yes, but I use it predominantly for audio as well. Yeah. Okay. So you can go and search for the book. So this is typically what I do. I go on Libby. I will search for the book. If my library doesn't have it, you can. There's even settings in there where you can notify your library that you want this book. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've done that before. Um, and you if the book is not available like it'll even show you where you are in line and yeah. so if there's like an estimate it, like, the time of how long it will take yes so my my rhythm here <laughs> is i go to libby <laughs> and i will see if i can get it if it's just, if it's a few weeks i'll i'll wait it out depends on what the book is um there's a book that I'm in line for right now that it literally says something ridiculous like, it will be months before you get this book. <laughs> something something funny like that. Yeah. And um, so in that case, like I kind of weigh out, like, do I want to use one of my Audible credits? I get one credit a month. I pay, I do what the minimum on Audible yeah. is. Yeah. And if it's worth it for me to go use that credit, if it's something... I don't know that I'm really wanting to read. I know it'll be good. I like if it's a Ruta Sapetis or um, <laughs> typically I will go just, I'll just order her books. But um, I'm trying to think like I have all the light we cannot see on Audible. Um, I don't know. Like I just kind of weigh out like how bad do I want to read this book? And who is the narrator? And if it's like, you know, a very long wait on Libby, I sometimes will go on Audible and I will just go ahead and use my credit to buy um, whatever the book is. Um, I already have a huge collection in Audible just from through the years. So do you but, want to uh, explain what Audible is? Okay. So Audible is a, it's through Amazon and it is a place you can go and you can buy um, audiobooks. Sadly, then we you... are not sponsored. <laughs> Audible. I know. Go look at my account. Like, just go look at it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're paying Amazon. <laughs> yes. So, um, 
anyways, it's through Amazon. It's an audiobook. Like basically you own where Libby, you're borrowing from the library and there's a time limit and like it'll go back automatically um, once your due date comes, you know, to pass. Um, where Audible, it's yours forever. And so you can listen to it, you know, as long as it takes you. Um, is that, does that cover that? You can buy different um, amounts. You could pay a certain amount each month and you can get, I don't know, like the lowest I think is, it's like $16 for yeah. one credit. Yeah. You can, you Which, can, so they also have the free catalog and you can pay to um, have access to the free catalog. Yeah. But, um, and like, and not lose any credits that you've stored up, I think is how it works. But um, I'm not over here storing credits, so I'm like anxiously no. waiting for my next credit all the time. But um, yeah, I think the cheapest, I mean, it used to be so much cheaper, but it's, but here's, here's what I do for Audible as well. So I do the same process of doing, like checking the library and seeing if it's there. And if it's not, or I don't want to wait, then I check Audible. But one of the decisions that helps me is if it's a short book, I'm not going to yeah. waste a credit <laughs> yeah. um, on a short book. And a lot of times the books that um, aren't that long or whatever, they're not going to be as much as your credit. They might be $10 or $9 or something like that. If that's the case, then I just flat out buy those and I don't... Um, waste a credit. I'm going to spend my credit on something that is more than $17. So that way I got it for $17. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because some yeah. of those audiobooks are on sale for like 30 bucks. Like it's very expensive. So if you're yeah. going to be consuming um, audi audiobooks a lot and not having success with the library, although I just know some people just would rather do Audible and just have a library um, versus using the library I just don't have that cash flow so yeah <laughs> I'm gonna get what I can get for free but um there's a lot of good stuff on audible too like and sometimes they have like exclusives to where they're only going to have the audiobook through audible I know like mm -hmm. when Harry Potter first came out I can't remember if it was audible or not but like she had an exclusive rights deal and you could only listen to it I'm pretty sure it was audible um, you could only listen to it on that platform. Like you couldn't get it through um, the library or anywhere else. So yeah. sometimes that happens. But yeah. Yeah. I think also you get certain perks too whenever you're an Amazon Prime member. This is a really great commercial for Amazon, I'm just saying. <laughs> but when you're a Prime member, you also get extra perks too. And it has something, I don't, I couldn't find it, what, what perks I get. Um, for being a prime member, but hmm. also I think you, maybe this is what you were talking about, about the free catalog. There are a lot of books, a lot of classic books too, Yeah, that you can just, you can hop on there and you don't have to use a credit and you don't have to purchase it. Um, right. I yeah. like to listen to Wendell Berry, which his stories are like, I like to listen to them because his stories are a little bit, they're very slow pace they're not super fast it's just you just kind of go back in time and <laughs> things are much yeah. slower a lot of his books are available on audible hmm. um just just for free so like i don't have to use any of my credits to listen to him yeah and audible also has um i don't even know what you call them but like dramatize it's almost like a uh, a yeah. story podcast do you know what i'm talking about they have a lot yeah. of these for kids and my kids loved listening to they had like an animal one um I, I like it's been too long i can't remember what it was but i know that there's like um little stories done by famous actors and stuff like that but it's not an actual book but it's them like reading a story i don't even know how to explain that but um, yeah. that's on there too. So again, that might be a good place to kind of dip your toe into, um, trying yeah. audiobooks is these like, um, kind of like radio, like you were saying, like dramatization, kind of like what they would have in the old days on the radio where somebody's like telling you the story, but it's not an actual book. It's just somebody telling you a story. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think this might be, uh, I, this thought just came to my mind. So this is just going to be like a very short commercial or info, <laughs> oh, info, <gosh>. info marshal. <laughs> but if you guys are listening to us on podcast and for some reason, like we should have talked about this in the speed section. I hope you guys know that you can speed us up if we're talking too slow for you on yes, YouTube on, or no. on Spotify. Um, just find the little settings button and you can you can do that as well. So just wanted to throw that in there. Well, and that yeah. reminds me that there are some books on Spotify. Did you mm -hmm. know that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you're already paying for a Spotify, um, like we have the premium, whatever, um, right. you can, there's, there's books on there too. So you awesome. can find a lot of audiobooks. I will say too, that there are other things apps that we haven't talked about there's one called scribd that you mm -hmm. can i think you can buy and borrow that one's kind of confusing to me but that exists there's another one that you can get through your library called hoopla um i have a lot of success with that one but again going back to the library apps one of the other frustrations with those is that your library is only it's just like a physical library they're only going to have what they have so right. there are a lot of times where you know, my library has something, but Raven's doesn't, or hers yeah. has it, but mine doesn't. So um, you kind of run into that situation too when you're going through the library. But like you said, you can always like say, "Hey, on the app, like I like requesting this book and let me know when it comes available," kind of thing, and they'll try to add it most of the time. The libraries yeah. still want to be relevant. I think this is this is another rabbit hole, but <laughs> I think I know. The, the libraries that I frequent are constantly trying to get engagement and get people in and, and have that same kind of relationship with the community that they used to have. So they want to help you. Don't think that it's like, oh, you know, they don't, they don't really care. Like they want yeah. to, they're most of the time, the people that work at the library love books. So they're going to want to help you love books yeah. as well. Yeah plug for local libraries anyways okay so now for most most public libraries. most public i'm sure yeah so I'm sure <laughs> there's crazy ones but and <laughs> and you know there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on at libraries i'm not saying that we should go to everything that the library has to offer but the majority of, and plus your taxes are paying for that it's true yeah so utilize that in my opinion okay so now we have some recommendations so I'm going to go first because my list is shorter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not that I'll go through it faster, but, um, so I just have a couple, um, I guess mine are more, uh, adult and, and your, yours are more kids. So, um, one of the ones that I thought was really, really well done is ready player one. Uh, most people know that it was a movie, um, but it's based on a book and, and there's more than one book in the series. I just only read the first one, but the audiobook is so well done. It, um, was super fun and fast paced and the book is different than the movie. So even if you've seen the movie, you should still, you could still listen to that one. Um, another good science fiction one is Dune. And I know I've already talked about this and it's not like this is the best science fiction book ever that it keeps coming up, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> the audiobook is so well done and it's sci-fi, but they have like creepy um space music in the background or people would like talk in a really weird like Darth Vader sounding voice like it was just really really well done so interesting enough that it was engaging now that one is probably a long book but it was very well done and then um, another adult one is As You Wish which is written by oh my goodness i didn't write down his name, but the guy that plays in The Princess Bride. I don't know his name. I totally can't put like, you know, his name. That's so embarrassing. Anyways, it's based on um, the actor in his time during um, filming The Princess Bride. And even if you don't love that movie, I think you would still like this book. And the fun thing about it is that he reads, I think it's Carrie Ulysses or something like that. Um, I'm looking it up now. Okay. So, he oh, reads, yeah, yeah, Carrie Ulysses. 
Okay, so he reads his parts, but he actually has the other actors that were in the movie, the ones that are still alive, sadly. Um, he has them come on and read, like, their take on whatever happened. Because I guess he got mm-hmm. their their whatever from their perspective of whatever he was talking about. And so they come on and read it. It's just so much fun. If you love that movie, you are you need to stop and go listen to this. Um because it's so it's just so well done have you listened to that one i have not actually i was just looking it up it's so much fun and then um my last one is wing feather saga so um i i can't remember if we've already talked about this but um during covid andrew peterson who is the author wrote um read through every night would read through a little bit of each book And we hung with him while he was doing that the entirety of COVID. I think it maybe took him a year. Um, And we listened to him read all of those books. And it was on YouTube and he sat by a fireplace and it was super lovely. And it's like a favorite memory. But um, he actually has redone the audiobooks for Audible. And I would assume that it's on library too. I just checked Audible. But he has gone back and read all of those books. And I can't tell you enough how fantastic he is at reading. Like, it's life goals to be able to read a story the way he does. He does all these fun character voices and just, and it's his story and he loves it so much that, like, when he was reading it on YouTube, I haven't listened to the actual audio recordings, but when he was reading it on YouTube, he would start crying yeah. Like he would just get so emotionally invested in his mm-hmm. in his story. Um, and and I think it does say something when the author is just so passionate about their story, you know, it was just it made you love the story even more. So the, here are a few of my recommendations um, for audiobooks. Um, Wizard of Oz is probably one of my all time favorites. Uh, we listen to this one as a family. Um, make sure that you get the one that Anne Hathaway reads. She does all yeah. of the voices. She does it fantastic. Um, we still have very fond memories. And my kids were really small when we did that one. I was um, going to put that on my list and I saw that it was on your list. So I was like, okay, good. Because that <laughs> one is like spectacular. It's so good. Um And then I already talked about Narnia, that one, we, I mean, you could listen to the books. Um, We just did the dramatization. Um, A lot of my kids, even from that, have gone and read the books on their own. So I guess I kind of get it like a D in homeschooling as a homeschool (laughs) mom, because we haven't technically read through all of the books. Um, I don't think we have either. So, I mean, basically... I'm a loser. But anyways, <laughs> um, I asked my kids what their favorite audiobooks were. And so I thought it would be fun to share some of their answers. Um, my youngest, who is 11, uh, she said, Out of My Mind, that book is by Sharon Daper. I cannot even remember her last name. Um, I think her, she picked that book because... It just moved all of us to such great compassion for people with um, varying, you know, disabilities or I don't like that word so much, but like special needs. And um, it just helped helped us even more, I would say, to see people as people um, and to treat everyone with kindness. Um, and then my oldest son, who is 14, he picked Candy Makers. This is a book that we did for book club and we did, I think it's two books. Um, Is it two books, Rachel? I think so. Yeah. So we did that one um, and he really, he, he chose that one. He said that was his favorite, probably because there was candy (laughs) at the book club. Doesn't hurt. Um, Right. And then my second son, um, he's 13 and he typically picks whatever the last audio book is that we read. <laughs> and um, the last one that we read was Tom Sawyer. And it was it was good. I'm glad we read it. But there are 
definitely some caveats to that. Um, there are some uses of language in that book that I do not prefer. Um, so we, I mean, it brought up great conversation for us, but I just want to put that out there. Don't just like send your kid off with that book. <laughs> Make yeah. sure that you're, you know, um, aware of the time frame that that was written in and all of that. Okay. So my 16 year old daughter, um, actually chose any of the missionary stories that we have listened to. Um, she really likes those and hearing about just things that people have endured for their faith and, you know, living out the callings on their lives. So that's what she picked. So very cool. I think this one was a really fun episode because I know it's really long, but <laughs> there's a lot of it's, tips. We're very passionate about audiobooks. <laughs> we're very are. passionate. We are. If you ever want to know how we get so much reading done, this is a just, huge part of it. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I think most people that are reading a ton that you see that have hundreds of books, I mean, I do know that there are people that physically read those that many, but for the most part, I think a lot of people are, are getting through a good number of books because they listen to audiobooks. There's no way that I would be able to read as many as I do in a year if I wasn't doing audiobooks. Yeah, actually, technically, I'm a very slow reader if I'm just reading the physical yeah. book. I'm pretty much, you know, I'm a really slow reader. I know there are some people that are really great at speed reading, um, and that amazes me. Yeah. But I'm not that person. No, I'm not <laughs> either. So I can get if if it's between not reading and and doing an audiobook, then I'm gonna definitely pick the audiobook. Oh yeah. And there's something about like I like podcasts and and stuff like that, but there's something about the accomplishment of finishing a book that's just so satisfying. So like I'm gonna gravitate towards listening to an audiobook while I'm doing chores instead of listening to music or a podcast or something like that, because of the accomplishment at the end of the day of like, Oh, I got through another book. That's so interesting because a lot of times throughout my day, I'm listening to podcasts. <laughs> Just see how yeah, many, how I many mean, more books could you get accomplished if you did that instead of, but you should for sure see, listen to this podcast. <laughs> I, yeah, I think the reason why that is, is because I'm constantly interrupted. And so I feel like with oh, podcasts, yeah. I don't have to pay a hundred percent attention and I can be interrupted and hit pause and just stop it all together. And like, it's okay. But, um, yeah, unless it's, you know, talking about aliens and then I'm very <laughs> like invested, <laughs> but that's a whole nother episode. That's a whole other getting yeah. to know us better. Oh, that's a great episode. I even like the title getting to know us better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't listen to a lot of books while I'm doing um, well, you know, yeah, waiting on children to need me for school and that kind of kind of thing. Yeah. If you have stuck with us till the end of this episode, you get a gold star. And let us know in the comments if you made it all the way through. But we really want to know. We really do. But we also like we really are passionate about audiobooks and we really want more people to take advantage of your already spending time doing other things you could just do those things while you listen to an audiobook yeah so thanks for listening and we'll see you next time bye bye